gymnastics in the spotlight. Today we're featuring 1988 Olympic all-around finalist Lance Ringgold. And Brandi Johnson, who finished best among the all-around competitors at the Olympic Games, she is America's future. The top gymnast from the Big 8 is Patrick Kirksey. He finished first in the all-around competition at the recently held Big 8 Championships. And the winner of the 1989 mixed pairs, Wendy Bruce, teamed up with Li Jing of China for an unbeatable combination. Conrad Vorsinger, currently in ninth place in the national team, is from Stanford. He is looking to climb in the rankings. Today is our third show, and meeting head-to-head -head is Lisa Panzeroni and Elizabeth Crandall. On the men's side in this competition, it is Brad Hayashi against Conrad Vorsinger. Conrad Vorsinger, the high-flying tumbler, is from the Pac-10. He finished for Stanford in first place in the all-around competition. He is on a roll, and today his quest for the gold continues in Denver, Colorado. Gymnastics Federation presents the 1989 U.S. Challenge. Today we are focusing on show number three, where it will be Lisa Panzeroni against Elizabeth Crandall on the women's side and Brad Hiyashi against Conrad Wussanger on the men's side. Welcome to the Denver Coliseum, where we have our third show in a series of 11 Friday Nights of Gymnastics here on ESPN. Hello, everyone. I'm Leander Riley, and joining me in this telecast is Olympic gold medalist Bart Connor. And Bart, in this telecast, we really have youth against experience. On the women's side, it's Elizabeth Crandall against Lisa Panzeroni. Today's competition really matches up the junior national team members against the senior national team members. Elizabeth Crandall is a bright young star. She's been two years on the junior national team, and Lisa Panzeroni has been three years on the senior national team. She's more experienced competitively. Actually, the same story holds true on the men's side. Conrad Vorsinger, he's in college. He's going up against a youth. Brad Hayashi. And Brad is very talented. He can do a lot of big tricks, but he's very inexperienced on a competitive format in a big national meet. Conrad, on the other hand, is coming off of a very big NCAA season at Stanford. All right, when we come back, we will meet youth against experience. Who will prevail in the 1989 U.S. Challenge? Stay with us to find out. In Denver, Colorado for the 1989 U.S. Challenge, if you missed our first two shows, well, here's who survived. Brandy Johnson and Margaret Hewlett both survived their competitions in the first round. And now we are looking at Lisa Panzeroni and Elizabeth Crandall looking to take on either Dundas or Hagberg. On the men's side, Lance Ringnald and Kyle Asano were the winners of our first two shows. We are now on the third show, and this is Conrad Borsinger against Brad Hayashi. They'll face the winner of Mark Warburton and Drew DiStefano. We are beginning with men's floor exercise. This is Conrad Borsinger. Because the men compete on six apparatus, we will not see any women for the time being. Women only compete on four apparatus. We will be following the Olympic order. So Conrad Borsinger is up first on floor. He'll be followed by Brad Hayashi, also on the floor exercise event. His first tumbling run is a straddled side, one and three quarter flip. Very nicely done. Good high tumbling. Conrad's coming off a really big year. He was the Pac-10 all-around champion. Oh, trouble there on that second pass. A little short on that one-and-a-half twisting backflip to the punch front. He won the all-around in the Pac-10s this year and really seems to be coming into his own because he has good style and he's very explosive. Although he's only been on the national team one year, I think he has a great future as a strong competitor for the U.S. team. Borsinger is 20 years old, competes at Stanford. Tuck double back. Very nice landing. Good dismount. It's too bad he had trouble at the end of that second pass because otherwise that was an excellent routine. This move was made famous by Lee Yueju 
from the Chinese team. Look at tremendous lift as he does one and three quarters flips in straddled side position while he's in the air. Really nicely done. Now here's where he had trouble. He does the front step out, round off, back handspring, back one and a half, and he's a little short and a little low, so that punch front is just not able to make it. This is a very impressive dismount. However, he really gets standing up very quickly, gets his chest up and over, and he really plants the landing. Good finish. Conrad Vorsinger of Stanford receives a 9.20 for that performance on the floor. He is now followed by Brad Hayashi. Brad lives in Irvine, California. He is coached by Ron Howard. He is just 17 years old. He's still in high school. Brad is very explosive on floor. He's a really outstanding tumbler, so if he's going to gain some ground on Conrad, he could do it right here. Watch this first tumbling run. Layout double. Oh! He put his hands down, which is a major mistake, but he covered beautifully because he went right into his press to handstand. I don't think he fooled the judges, but uh, <laughs> he did a good job at covering up. Look at that height on the front step out. Through front handsprings to a front with a half and laid out position. He's very explosive. Third tumbling run, round off side. Quite a bit of dance, a terse tape, full turn for a wet to the corner. And this is a move called a Y scale. Right, last tumbling run, tucked up, he laid it back. He really leaned back on the takeoff. He had good height. But it was unusual that he had so much trouble. He's so explosive. I'm surprised he had trouble on floor. In a way, this is a, should have been a really strong event for him, and he blew a good opportunity here. He opens with a layout double. He dumps it back a little bit. He lays back just a little too hard, and so he doesn't get the height. He's got plenty of rotation initially, but because he's so low, he ends up on all fours. And it is 8.35. The second pass, a really high front step out. Front handspring through to a front flip flop to a front with a half. It's a good combination. And the score for Brad Hayashi, 8.35. So now after one rotation, he trails Conrad Vorsinger by 0.85. We'll be back in a moment. Hayashi by 0.85. The scores are 9.2 to 8.35. We are about to see the women compete on their first event. Again, following the Olympic order, women start on the vault. And you are looking at Lisa Panzeroni. She will execute two vaults. Each vault will be scored separately. The higher scores are the ones that will be used. Lisa's been on the senior national team for three years, and she's been all over the world with major international events. Tell her before she goes back on the Here's her first vault. She gets two. Nice job. That was a good vault. She was having lots of trouble in warm-up, getting onto the horse and getting a good rebound. That's the best she's done it all day. Good thing she saved it for the meet. Round off. She goes back on. Good, solid push. A tremendous distance. She pulls her legs a little bit. She didn't need to do that. But because she didn't have really good confidence from the warm-up balls, I think she thought she would have been in trouble. But she did a nice job. She got a 9-7 for that first ball. Now we move over to her second. Lisa Panzeroni competes for Parquets. Her coach, Bill Strauss, and of course Donna Strauss, his wife, they both coach at Parquets, but Bill is here today. Just a little short. Still, I think her first fault was very good and she'll be pleased with that score because she didn't get quite the solid push that she needed on her second ball. Watch what happens here. She does round off. She's onto the horse, but her arms are a little bit bent and she's little scrunched into the horse a little bit. And of course, if you don't really get a good tight position and a tight rebound off the horse, it's hard to 
force the height and the distance that you need to complete this Needless to say, the 9.7 is the score that will be used. Lisa Panzeroni, 9.7. And now Elizabeth Cranbo will ball. She likes to be called Liz. Originally from Sacramento, she too is very young, just 14 years of age. She was born in Sacramento, still lives there. She competes for the Desert Devils. Her coach is Stormy Eaton. Yeah, in fact, right now she's uh, she's living down in Tempe, of course, working with Stormy Eaton at the Desert Devil School. She is a is a very bright young girl and an exciting young gymnast. That a girl. Nice job. Once again, she was having trouble in warm-ups on that same ball. Her hand placement on that looked a little too much to the board side to me. Well, you know, she's been having all kinds of problems with the consistency. You're right. Watch what happens with her hands. She just barely gets them up onto the horse. And, of course, she does a good job at pulling the vault around. She didn't attempt to do it layout, as we just saw Panzeroni do. She signaled to the judges that she was going to do this Yurchenko vault in the tucked position. And you can see she has a couple of form breaks, and she isn't quite as high as she needs to be. She got but she's pretty height. pleased because she had plenty of trouble in warm-ups. I think that was, uh, We're not that was ready. a good ball for her, and she knows it. There you see the score, 9.625. I think she got most of her height from her thumbs. That's about all that was on top of the horse. Let's see if she can get her hand placement a little bit better. Oh, that's a Much better, better one. Yeah. Sure. Very nice job. She relaxed on that vault, got onto the board, really in good solid position as you mentioned she got a good solid rebound off the horse good clean job round off back handspring a little bit higher placement with the hands of course that allowed her to keep her legs a little tighter together better form and of course then she doesn't have to worry about just making it she can start spotting the floor and concentrating on sticking the landing not just surviving through the vault she looked much more comfortable on that and Liz Crandall received a 9.70 for her second vault. Obviously, the higher score is the one she'll carry. And now we have a deadlock score between Panzeroni and Crandall. They both have 9.7. Now, let's go back to the men. They are ready to compete. On the pommel horse, Brad Hayashi's up first. Conrad Worsinger will follow. In order to keep this competition close, Brad is going to have to do a good job here. He really had trouble on his opening event floor, where he normally scores really well. So he's going to have to pull up some ground here on an event that he isn't necessarily known to make a lot of points on. There's the single leg work. Those two scissors are required. He needs a little more elevation over the horse. Oh, he shouldn't have given up there. He was doing fine. Maybe that's, maybe that's being 17. Well, certainly that's one of the things we're, we're able to witness here is that uh, these kids are young and... Uh, and they have bright futures ahead of them. And uh, it's tough. When I was 17, I made all kinds of mistakes on simpler elements. He got away with some of the tougher skills in the early part of the routine, but he picked up into a move called a moor, which is very basic. And uh, he had trouble. It looked like he knew he was going to have to scramble through that routine from the first part. And it was like he was waiting for, OK, when are the problems going to happen? <laughs> Brad Hayashi was already .85 in the hole going into this rotation. Yeah, he was in really low. Looks like he was he had his hand placement such that he was going to do a move actually called a bailey, but he got leaning way over the front of the horse. And it takes a lot of fight to be able to stay on there. Uh, he he uh, will do better on Palm Horse in the future, I'm sure. Back in 1981, ESPN televised the first U.S. Challenge. Of course, then it was called Single Elimination. These names should sound very familiar to you. Scott Johnson, Jim Hartung, Tim Daggett, Phil Cahoy, Peter Vidmar. These are all gymnasts who competed in this single elimination format. Now you see the score for Brad Hayashi, 8.30. Of course, all those gymnasts went on to become Olympians for the United States. So when you look at these young men, think 1992. This is the pool of talent from which the U.S. will draw. Conrad Vorsinger. Really nice mount as he does flares and travels across the horse and back down. This is a good exercise so far. He's very quick. That's a good combination. A handstand down to a scissor full turn. Although he's a little rushed, he has a very aggressive style, which is impressive. A few minor form deductions. Good clean this mount. 
Conrad Rosinger competes for Stanford University. Just came off the Pac-10 championships and he